This episode of Grilled is sponsored by Rationale, your leading provider in multifunctional hot food preparation equipment. Register now for a free Rationale live demo at www.rationale-online.com. This podcast was recorded via Zoom, and to make life even harder, we decided to have four guests and play audio roulette. The louder you talk, the more airtime you get. Joking aside, we have tried our best to bring you this episode with the best sound we can, but it's not as good as we would like. Hopefully we can get back to recording in person soon. Uh, this is Grilled, a podcast by the Staff Canteen, uh, where we used to go into kitchens of the UK's best restaurants and interview them there, but now we have to settle for Zoom. Um, so uh, please do recommend us to your friends, uh, colleagues, family, if you enjoy the podcast. If you don't enjoy the pos- podcast, then please don't tell anybody because uh, we don't want that spreading around. Uh, in this episode, it's a National Chef of the Year special. Um, as with most events in 2020, it couldn't go ahead as planned but they adapted and managed to go ahead despite coronavirus restrictions. So let me introduce my guests. Uh, we've got David Mulcahy, the man who makes sure National Chef of the Year happens. Uh, Paul Ainsworth, who uh, is this year's Chair of Judges. Uh, Claire Smith, another infamous judge that the contestants have to impress. And of course, the National Chef of the Year 2021 winner, Nick Smith from back in London. Uh, thank you all for joining me and welcome to Grilled. Hi, Hi Cara. Hi, Cara. <laughs> How are you? Very well. Thank you all for joining me. It's a pleasure, uh, especially on such a hectic day, because uh, obviously the last one before we all locked down. So, um, so before we go into the main questions, I have a few off-topic, uh, so people can kind of find out a bit more about you. So, my first one is: Do any of you have any weird obsessions? Who Legal? wants to go first? Legal or illegal? Oh, it's completely up to you, David. Whatever you want to divulge. <laughs> I can't think of any. Um, been put on the spot there. My I staff would probably tell you that I had a few. But <laughs> what would they say, Claire? Um, oh, I don't know, actually. Hopefully it'll be nice. Um, I'm a bit obsessive compulsive with things and small things, I suppose. But I think that's in our nature as chefs to be like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know anything weird. We don't yeah. think it's weird, do we? It's just no, weird. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Paul, you're very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, like the same as the ones with Claire, you know, a bit of detail and, and all of that, but that's not weird. Well, it might be weird to some people, but that's just normal um, to me to want to be like that. Um, I don't know, like, yeah, I am quite an obsessive person about things, but I'm just trying to think what you would what you would think would be weird. I've put you all on the Uh, spot there, haven't I? (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah, I think like Claire says, you you would have to, you you would have to ask the, yeah, ask ask the team and stuff. Like, so where I'm sat right now is what we would, what we plan to do before lockdown, which is our new office. It's like our new, our new headquarters and stuff. And there's like lots of plants in here and I've become quite obsessive about the plants being, like not dusty and, and watered and like making sure that like, trying to allocate the best people in the office to look after the plants. I think dusting plants is quite a weird obsession. <laughs> <laughs> they are, I, I, I do want to be first into the, first into the mix. <laughs> so, okay. uh, but yeah, I, I definitely am that, yeah, that, that sort of, that, yeah, that sort of way and stuff. But uh, I suppose okay. I don't find any of them weird. I find them all completely normal. <laughs> All chefs are completely normal, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right, next question then. So what job do you secretly think you would be good at, but you would never actually do it? Uh, I think that I'd be good in uh, sport. I think that I wouldn't actually do it, but I think that um, I potentially could have been a professional show jumper when I was younger, and I, it is a job that I think I'd be pretty good at. Yeah, that's a, good, that's a cool sport. answer. Yeah. yeah, I feel like you channel all of the stuff that you do now into sport. So I, yeah. I definitely get that. Brilliant. Okay, okay. Uh, David, what about you? What job would you secretly like to do, but you, you've never actually would do it? I suppose I think probably uh, a therapist of some kind, because I seem to spend, spend most of my life <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to either build people up or um, or trying to analyse, you know, where they're coming from and trying to understand. So I think that whole it's a cross between a politician and a therapist, probably. 
Yeah, both of which are very busy at the minute. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, uh, Nick, what about you? Uh, well, for me, um, I love watching, uh, I don't know if you know, the Salvage Hunter on telly. Oh, yes, he yeah. He calls all the antiques and that, and he's, uh, I don't know, something like that. He's quite artistic. He's, he, you know, he finds these, these, this stuff and, you know, you look at it and it just looks like junk, but he ends up turning it into something amazing um, where, you know, I I've look, I've look at this set he, he bought for, I don't know, about £600 and he sold it for like £4,000. And But I love like how he kind of finds finds things and, you know, turns them around and turns them into something really, really stunning. So um, that would be something I think I'd really enjoy. That's something you could take up in the next lockdown. Might be. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, you sorted for four weeks. <laughs> and Paul, what about you? Uh, yeah, a couple of things. Really. The, the first one, I always think about like the, the special forces. Uh, okay. I, I, I really do think if I had my time again, I, I love reading about it. Um, I love all the books, podcasts. I love the discipline of it. Um, and I think it's something I would have like, like, relished and like, kind of really enjoyed. And the sort of stuff that I actually do, like if I say if I'm running, because I, I love running to like house music, I love house music, that's like my like favourite. And like, honestly, if I'm on a run, I'll start to kind of like drift into this, like being like some superstar I beat for DJ. Like, I, like literally, like I, I'm like, I know I could do it. I know what tracks I'll play. I proper get the crowd rocking. <laughs> I just, honestly, like that type of music just makes me want to be like a superhuman being. So yeah, I, that's like something. I will, I will, I will. One day, I will somewhere eat, like just play a set somewhere. Well, yeah. well, again, we're going into lockdown. You could do live DJ sets for people and practice yeah. that way There's, i've just got to learn how to do it so <laughs> <laughs> i have like watched on youtube like um like so basically you know the simple thing is it's just lining up those beats and stuff like that but yeah it's um it's obviously a lot more complicated than that but yeah i think when you watch when you watch those guys who are at the top of their game actually do what they do it's i think they're amazing yeah so yeah that's 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 my uh, that's what I'd love to do. That's a cool job as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's a cool job. Brilliant. Okay. Well, I feel like I've learned a little bit about all of you now from that. I'm going to keep that question for future future podcast. <laughs> <laughs> On Wednesday, November 18th at 10 a.m., we will be revealing the winners of the Staff Canteen Awards 2020. If you want to watch live, head over to the Staff Canteen Facebook page and you can sign up to the event there too so you get a reminder and don't miss out. This is our first awards and we had hundreds of nominations and 30,000 votes. So thank you to everyone who got involved. Make sure you congratulate the winners via social media and we'll be back again next year to celebrate everyone in hospitality. We are all here to talk about National Chef of the Year. And congratulations, Nick, by the way. Obviously, I didn't say that in the very beginning, but congratulations. Um, I think, so, David, for you, why did you decide to continue to run it this year rather than postpone? I, I guess, um, like, like anything, it's probably back to that first question of yours around uh, obsessive. I think, you know, when, when, we, when we get the bits between our teeth um, and decide to do something, I think it's very hard to let go. Um, you know, partly you feel that you've got a responsibility. Uh, and the other part is that um, there's probably an expectation on the other end uh, saying, is this going to happen? And, and the, way, the way we did it really was to say, OK, let's look at worst case scenario. Let's look at how we can make this work for everybody. Um, if you remember, obviously, this, this launch started just as lockdown was starting. So we didn't know what we know now, but we certainly very quickly thought, well, you know, people are going to be uncertain. There's going to be a lot of anxiety. There's going to be, you know, people can't get access to their kitchens and, and the, the, just the practical stuff. So what can we do to help that? What can we do to kind of give ourselves time to figure this out? But let's make a commitment now. Whatever happens, we'll change and adapt and do it. Um, and that's where then the team, the wider team, getting them involved um, to say, okay, how are we going to do it? 
Um, and uh, there was a little bit of, well, a lot, I suppose, learning by what was playing out. But I think right from the beginning, it just felt like, you know, we'll rise to this challenge. The industry needs some something positive, and and certainly through the summer, continue to need something positive. So let's go for it. Let's make it as amazing as we can possibly do. And uh, yeah, I think we did. I mean, the testament is Nick there. <laughs> so yeah, brilliant. And, and Claire, obviously you've been a part of uh, National Chef of the Year and, and and Paul as well for, for for many years. Did you think that it would go ahead? How, what did you feel when obviously you would you knew that it was going to make it difficult? Um, yeah, I mean, I, it was great that it did go ahead, to be perfectly honest, because it's it's been such a difficult year, particularly for our industry. And it is, we're all, you know, saying to people, come to our restaurants, you know, it's safe, we're carrying on. And doing the National Chef of the Year that we could do in a safe way is no different to that. And, and we need we needed something positive this year to remind everyone, you know, what we're doing and, and just give all these guys that have been working so hard a chance Um People look forward to the competition every year. They put a lot of work into it. And, you know, it's great that it did go ahead. And, and you know, it was the first thing that we really did for such a long time to come together. And I think just for people's their health and well-being, we need to carry on a little bit. So it was such a positive thing. It was great to see everyone. It was great to see the standard again. You know, the guys, despite everything that's happened, you know, everyone was really up for the challenge. And it, it was really good to see them come through and the standard that was delivered and it was done in a safe way yeah and what was it like judging because obviously you had to judge uh was it the, the second stage by uh by videos what was what was that like Cause that's obviously very different to what you normally do yeah well the guys i didn't do the videos but the guys did that but i would just say as well that they um you know we all split up and did uh you know differently this year so it was a case of you know not more than two people tasting the dishes and so it again goes to show typically hospitality industry that we can organize ourselves you know we can we can put things together and, and it's just a case of organization which which you know, David and, and the team at National Chef did a brilliant job of, of bringing it all together yeah and, and Paul how about how about you is it obviously judging by a by a video and, and do you think that this kind of having to approach the competition in a different way is is a good thing and you possibly learn things about the competition and uh, there's positives to take out of it yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, it, you know, jumps jumps to probably a question further down the line, but I think that when you're kind of backed into a corner like we were with National Chef of the Year, it makes you look at everything completely different and you adapt and come up with new ideas and new solutions to, to the problem. So, you know, straight away, I, I feel that the changes that we've made aren't just COVID changes. I feel that they're changes for the future. Um, I think it's a. I think it shows great grit and determination, and is a testament to what the competition stands for and the heritage of the competition that we still did it. Um, and like you know, as David says, you know, we've got our, you know our winner right here now on you know on this podcast. Um, you know, an amazing winner, a worthy winner, and um, it, to to be a part of it, actually in this sort of current crisis that we're in, and. The, the sort of the competition that we pulled off and the job that everybody did, like so many positives came out of it for me. I've judged it twice um, when Claire was chair of judges, when Gary was chair of judges, and then and then to now come back and be chair of judges and just see the changes and how we adapted for kind of you know COVID nineteen. I think is truly brilliant. Yeah, excellent. It's, yeah, it's really good to hear. And I'm, I was so pleased that it went ahead. And obviously, Nick, we need to come to you. Um, as the, you know, as a competitor, did you think it would, would go ahead? Um, and how did you find doing it this way? Um, well, there was concerns when, when, we, when we went into to lockdown. I mean, I thought we was only going to be closed for, you know, for a couple of weeks. Uh, it, obviously, <laughs> it just went crazy and it went on for so long. And, and then obviously, I'll see bits that were being said about National Chef of the Year and I was, you know, concerned and they're going to be gutted that it may not go ahead. Um, but then, obviously, when I started seeing David talking about it and said that, you know, I watched the videos that was posted and it was going ahead, I was obviously really pleased because, you know, I'd already put some work into it already and I was really excited about entering it. You always you always get really, you know, you 
you build yourself up for, for this competition. Um, and I think the way he was done this year, I, I think he was brilliant. It, everything about Nashville Sheffield year was always really good quality. You know, I've, I've done it previous before. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been fantastic. I mean, I, I've enjoyed every single minute of it. That's good to hear, David, right? <laughs> but it's all worthwhile. So. <laughs> yeah. um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the second round, 40 chefs had to send you a video. Is that yeah. correct? How the hell did you get 40 chefs to send you a video on time? I need to know this because this will just change my life. Well, uh, yeah, it was, it was a real interesting test. <laughs> because, um, and I guess, you know what, when we, when we probably take the initial 100-odd entries and whittle it down, firstly, those who have entered in the first place are, are serious about it. You know, they want to get to the next stage. And I think that the first editing, really, the first, you know, cull to, to get to that 40, um, you're looking for, without knowing their names, because none of us as judges you know, would, would know their names on purpose, um, we're looking for that commitment and that level of, execution and detail that you think this is serious this isn't somebody just having a go so already they're in it for the right reasons so they didn't know what the next task was going to be because at that time when they entered they thought oh there's going to be a semi-final you know so it was only then we said right let's let's do it slightly differently so those 40 that got through uh didn't know until they had a knock on the door from the postman um, and, and in a box was a jacket and that jacket was almost like that Ryder Cup approach. It was saying, congratulations, you're through to the next stage. And in that envelope, in that jacket was your next task. And that task was the video um, to two or three bites to, to sum yourself up uh, as a chef um, and, um, and, and a time limit on it. So absolutely. Like one was make it really easy, make it very clear what they had to do make it personal to them, give them uh, total guidance, i.e. it's only one minute, 20 seconds on a WhatsApp video, so very simple if you, if you want to keep it simple. We followed that up with um, a little training session on, on how to do that best as well, so there was guidance all the way. But for me, and I think, you know, it's, it's, it's over to Paul really because we talked about this two to three byte piece that Paul was um, very excited about and we actually thought originally let's hang on to that for a potential twist in the final but when this came along we thought hang on a sec this is perfect for for um, that online piece because you're selling yourself but you're selling yourself through food um, and it was brilliant wouldn't change that ever <laughs> it was fantastic because <laughs> we learned so much about the people genuinely yeah. about people yeah, and no, I'm, really. I'm, I'm sure, Paul, you, you remember, I mean, we had a few uh, tearful moments as well, reading these uh, or listening to these videos. Um, it was emotional. Yeah, uh, to be honest, Carl, I, I actually think, I, I know what you're saying, cause you, you know, like, you know, it sounds like, really, how, how on earth would 40 chefs, like, do that? But actually, I think it's just the day, the, the sort of the sign of the times, I think actually you probably it's probably more productive for them to do that and create a video and you know and sort of the idea was for them to kind of like talk about themselves and and why that dish why that dish means so much to them and you know like i'm sure claire will, you know will say the same you know like you, you can really see a chef's personality through their food um and and i think that you know you're we're so used to it just being all written 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 but actually to be able to talk about it and express yourself like that i i actually wasn't surprised that it was that sort of yeah we we got sort of all 40 chefs to you know to do it and they were really you know, and they were really really good and then and then of course you've got someone that fancies themselves a bit um you know a bit handy with the, with tech so there were some videos that were like, yeah, you know, they were going, they were going for a BAFTA, and there were others that they had like done. I think mean, while they were in on the toilet. Um, so yeah, it was it was it was it was, it was brilliant, and they were and they were great watching. A real insight into themselves. <laughs> Nick was obviously BAFTA worthy. Yeah. <laughs> 
And Nick, from your point of view, how was it to get that jacket and then find out that's what you had to do next? Was that pressure or a very well, different type of pressure, I suppose? I mean, my wife could probably explain it better that day because she had to go out for me all day. But <laughs> literally, like literally hanging, looking out the window, waiting for like a, a UPS truck to turn up. Because obviously I was watching Twitter and I was seeing a lot of people posting and they're getting their jacket. And I thought, what an amazing way to 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 know that you've got into the semi final, and um, so my wife, my boys, they were just like watching me, and I was just literally glued to the window, uh, waiting, waiting for it to, to turn up, and and when and when I, I mean the, the UPS guy must have thought I was mad because he didn't have a clue what was in the packet, and um, and how much it meant to me, um, but I was I was just thrilled, and, and I wanted to put it straight on, and I wanted to post straight away. Um, to show how much it meant for me to to be in semi final because with Nash Sheppard, you, you you dream from the beginning, so it's such a journey. Um, you know, you start your paper entry, you, you cook your dishes, you take your photos, you you meticulously go through it. You know, try to make it as best as you can, and with that hope that you know, and and that's, it's to start the journey. It's such a long journey. Just I mean, getting in the semi finals is always a massive achievement. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it was an incredible day. It must be so nice for you all to hear that that side of it, Claire. Is it is it nice to hear kind of you know that kind of enthusiasm and that excitement for the competition? Um, yeah, I mean it's it's great, and you know having obviously been a part of it for for quite a few years, it it does mean so much to people, and it it's such a great opportunity, and, and especially people like Nick who have done it a couple of times before. You know they put their all into it and particularly this year I think it almost meant more than ever because of what we've all been through um I think it was really something that was so positive for everyone to be a part of this year and and everyone even you know all the judges were so excited to to see each other and to be be doing something again it was really one of the first things that we had come together to do um but yeah it, it's it is quite emotional it's great David obviously uh for the the final cook-off, you, you've got all 10 together, that's right, but socially distanced, is, is that correct? Yeah, we did it yeah. in two, uh, two sessions, five and five, but 10, 10 on the day, yeah. Okay, and so I suppose that what Claire said then, to, to get together, it must have been so nice having everyone not being able to be together, especially you don't realise until you're not allowed to see people how much you actually quite like being around people, do you? So. Yeah. <laughs> And it's the, it's the simple things, isn't it? It's literally that. It was like a virtual hugathon there for, for <laughs> John Bossy and Claire and Paul and everyone on the day. But um, but yeah, it meant uh, it meant a lot. Well, to be honest, it meant a lot for me and to to us as a team because you know we, we, this was the end of it. This was the bringing together of that that whole effort to say right, we've got ten fantastic finalists. You know, quite honestly, anyone could have taken it because at you know at the beginning because obviously. 10 had gone through such a, a, a tough, uh, rigorous, uh, you know, uh, year, you know, as well to kind of get there. But we got there. The judging, I think the judging benefited from less judges with more time to judge and go over it. Um, so that was interesting. And I think I'm always looking at, um, you know, what do we do next year and the year after? And what did we do five years ago? And how has that changed the dynamics and, and all of that? So it's it's a learning curve and you're watching and listening to feedback and um and uh and you know allowing that to make some decisions for for next year because this competition you know has always been or should always be reflecting the market the industry so we don't want to stick in one time zone this this moves that has to move and as trends change and you know even the the criteria has changed over the years to reflect what people are um maybe capturing today and the message we want to give with that as well you know we want to be on top of this so um yeah so having that whole 10 uh, and of course the trick with the 10 this year in the final was normally they would have a basket of ingredients and it would be you know given to them a week or two earlier um but uh, we thought the effort that they put into their original entry and not having had a chance to do that in a semi-final we pulled it forward to the final, gave a little bit of new guidance, uh, and they could basically make that happen. So I think we saved some stress 
but made sure we saw the effort that they put in at the very beginning. Yeah, it, it sounds like all the changes that you were forced to make were all actually really positive ones and actually yeah. had a really a good impact on the, on the competition, which is, is really great to hear. So, um, and so Nick, how did it feel to win? I've been asked so many times. <laughs> I can't find the words really to describe it because um, I mean, I've committed so much time to it, you know, five years, you know, Claire was uh, was was uh, chairman of judges the first time I ended it. Um, it's you know like any any chef. It was a dream for me. Um, so many times I, I used to go and just you know go to sleep at night and dream about actually what I, what I would do if I actually held that trophy and what would I say? Um, what would I do next? You know, they're they're, they're all they're all things that are in my head. Um, and to actually now be there. And to you know to be national chef of the year, it's I just can't I can't explain it. It's, it's incredible. Um, it's something I was in love with. I just didn't want to. I didn't want to stop. You know, I, it, obviously I was disappointed each time. I didn't quite quite make it, but you know I learned so much from it. Yeah, you know, really I really have developed from it. It's it's been brilliant for me and and for my team as well. You know the the guys that I've been working with and they've been fantastic supporting me. I've been very very lucky. In that respect, because I've, I've had amazing people around me that that kind of understood what it meant to me and you know helped me get there. So it's uh, it's been it's been amazing. I'm I'm so proud so proud to be um to be part of it. Yeah, uh, were you disappointed at all that obviously it, circumstances were so different? So you weren't cooking in front of everybody at the restaurant show. You you know you weren't then awarded it. You know, if live. I know it was live, but like not on a stage in front of everybody. That you know, the usual way that it's awarded. Was there any slight disappointment there, or, or did you just not think about that at all? Not at all. I, I thought it was amazing this year. In I was gobsmacked. You know, when Paul and David brought through. You know, it came all the way from Cornwall to to be there to congratulate me. Uh, you know that I'll be forever grateful for that. It was amazing. So. I thought it was even more special this year than you know. Obviously, it's it's always amazing in a final, but I was there was no disappointment whatsoever. I mean, I don't know if you've seen, but how emotional I was. I was completely <laughs> um because it was just everything would just sort of come out, and um, I thought it was actually incredible. And I, I really am grateful for for the amount of effort everybody's put in put in to to that day. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And Paul, obviously, it's your first year as uh, the head of uh, ch or chair of, of judges. Um, definitely one to remember. <laughs> absolutely. I, I would just like to say as well, you know, like, you know, compared to what I have to do, you know, the work that gets put into the competition by David and, and Claire, honestly, like, I, I could not think of a more deserving worthy winner than the nick and and the reasons are like first and foremost it's all about the cooking and nick won that competition because he was the best chef on he was the best chef that that's it end of but also we've got a bit of a you know we've got a kind of a double whammy with nick because he's 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 super humble he's a brilliant ambassador for what the competition stands for um, like the question you just asked him then was, he, you know, is he slightly disappointed? I was saying that no, he wasn't because the emotion he showed and when you, when he displayed the emotion, he did that genuine emotion of like of winning it. And he's also a great ambassador for those that, like the, the nine people that didn't win it, you know, a month ago, that he's, he's, he's tried and tried and tried and he's, he's, he's been defeated but he's got back up again and he's gone again and he's proof that like if you don't win it go again and keep trying and never give up and if you believe in yourself and you want it and you know like he said you know dreaming of what he would say if he won dreaming of like what it would feel like to win that's that's incredible and that's when you when you've got a winner like that you know when you've got a winner like that that's won because you know on the merit of brilliantly cooked food but also is the whole package i just think it's a, he's just such an amazing ambassador for the competition so you know it's it, it's 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 been a pleasure you know like my, my side of it is you know is kind of 
it's relatively easy. It's a pleasure to come up in Cornwall. You know, the, the you know, real heroes are, are David and Claire and the team behind the scenes that you know that put it together. No, absolutely. I I, I wouldn't. I would not want to put uh, National Chef of the Year together at all. So <laughs> hat off to you, David. Um, I, I do want to quickly just talk about Young National Chef of the Year as well. Um, just to say, uh, obviously more than ever, it's so important, isn't it, to to encourage our young chefs and let them know that the, that the industry is still there. It is still there for them. It's still a great career choice with all the negativity and the stress that's going on at the minute. So, uh, David, is that something that you kind of, you'd agree with, uh, with the with the Young National Chef of the Year as, as well? Yeah, of course. I think um, I think it, it, it always fits nicely into National, and that's why we created it not, not that many years ago, about 10 years ago now. But the idea is that um, we can pull, again, from those young chefs who are succeeding and maybe, you know, uh, best in college or doing other competitions or um, just need that extra platform. And I guess really it's, it's a perfect time to say to people not in the industry, parents that are looking at their kids and the careers that they may go into, um, you know, we have a tough time in this industry in, in getting people to stay in it anyway. So the idea that people can look to those young aspiring stars coming from every sector and every segment and go, I want to be like that person. I, I can do that um, and, and be inspired by that and see that the chefs like these on the call, you know, Paul, Claire, Phil Howard, you know, you, you just go on and on. All the, the chefs that are involved in this are nurturing employers that want these people and want to capture them and that passion and enthusiasm while they're still young. Um, so I think Young National Chef of the Year certainly to me is a beacon for that, you know, and it, uh, and this year we had probably the most diverse, most um, gender wise, ethnic, etc. you know, that really kind of says the industry is for everyone. It's, it's, it's inclusive. And I think we captured that this year with the, with the finalists, um, and Harisha Kesh was a great chair of judges as well, as always, and a past winner. So, yeah, um, great, uh, great ambassador. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's fantastic to hear. And like I said, the, the changes that are made seem to have, have made a real positive impact. So I look forward to seeing what you do uh, to, to top that next year, David. So <laughs> no pressure. Um, I, do need... <laughs> <laughs> um, I do need to talk about um, the dreaded coronavirus. Uh, as with every podcast I've done for the past few months, I've had to, to talk about that topic. Um, things have uh, changed since uh, we organised to have this chat. Uh, so now we are um, about to go into a second lockdown. And when this podcast goes out, we'll be about halfway through that. So just to focus on uh, London to start with, Claire, um, how has the, has the core team kind of dealt with all of the changing restrictions? And what impact... Is it having and what impact will this next stage have on you guys? Um, so, well, a tremendous impact, obviously. Um, it's, you know, it's been really, really tough um, as, as for everybody, um, you know, across the world, really. It's not just, you know, specifically uh, a country or an area. It's, it's the globe. So we're all in this together. All our uh, hospitality friends across the world are suffering the same thing, and we can all learn from what we've all done. You know, it is a case of of adapting and being quick on your feet with every change that comes in. We just need to be so so quick with it to adapt to it, and and it throws us out for a little bit, and then we get back on our feet, and then we start going again, and then that becomes the norm. And we're okay with it and then something else happens and then we've got to change that again I mean like every time there's there's a change we're literally moving thousands of bookings I mean it is a tremendous amount of admin on top of all the other stress obviously financially has a huge impact um, you know it'll be four and a half months the business will be closed for now you know with there's no help for the overheads you know the hospitality industry are going to be political now has had very little help from from the British government um, which I think is it's uh, it's really something that is appalling. We need to to do something about that, um, particularly you know in London. For myself, you know we've got no help at all. Um, you know, rateable values too high, so there's no grants available. 
um, you know, landlord wants to charge full rents. There's, there's just no help. And so we have, we have all of that as well as the uh, additional costs. And now, again, you know, we've got furloughed staff and all the overheads and recovering national insurance. And, you know, to get, I think it's the £3,000 grant this time, won't even cover my electricity bill. Um, however, court has been really, really busy. We've been absolutely pumping. It was my biggest concern. You know, we bounced back, people spending lots of money, having having a great time. We opened on the 4th of July. We got going straight away. We've had a good four months, which is putting us in a good position. Um, and hopefully, if it's four weeks, it'll be four weeks. We've kept the whole team. We've got 44 members of staff. We've still got them all. And, you know, I'm determined not to let uh, this coronavirus knock us back. You know, course three years old. We didn't make it to three. We were, we were in lockdown when we turned three. Um, but we, we, you know, I'm determined to keep moving forward. I'm not going to step back. We've, we've, we've tried to deliver the same experience for our guests. I want everybody to walk out the door knowing why they've come out. You know, to walk out the door and say, I'm really glad I went to a restaurant. I'm really glad I went out. I've really enjoyed myself. And I think that we as, as chefs and restaurateurs have that responsibility for the whole